G'day and welcome to my first VEX V5 tutorial where we will go through the build and code for the VEX V5 pneumatics kit. Hello, I'm Mr. Code. Adding a pneumatic system to your robot can give it a ton of advantages without having to use up your precious motor count. Pneumatic cylinders are small, fast actuators that excel in pushing and pulling mechanisms for your robot, but seeing all these tubes and gauges for the first time can be a bit daunting for new robotics teams. So this tutorial is going to break down all of the basics and get you started in no time. I've provided the timestamps for the building and coding sections of this tutorial tutorial for your convenience. If you want to skip forward to the relevant section, then check out the description below. Today what you'll need is a VEX V5 pneumatics kit, a VEX V5 brain and battery, and all the cables. You will also need to have an adjustable wrench and an electric pump. I'm using this Ryobi electric inflator, which also has a handy digital pressure gauge on top. I'll post a link for where you can buy it in the description below. Now I spend a lot of time writing tutorials, testing the code and editing these videos together. So if you find any of it helpful in any way, then please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. It is your support that lets me continue making VEX videos. So I thank you in advance. Let's start by connecting up a basic pneumatic system. So this large silver canister is your air tank and it will be the main device for storing all of the air in your pneumatic system. You'll also use these boxes of fittings which screw into the air tank and your pneumatic cylinders so that it can attach um, tubing around it. Uh, this is the pneumatic tubing. This tubing uh, redirects the air from your canister throughout your system. Make sure you only use the tubing that is necessary. You don't want to have uh, it too long, otherwise uh, it will use unnecessary amounts of air. This red thing over here is a pressure gauge. It's used to check at a glance how much air you have left in the system. These things here are called solenoids, and a solenoid is an electronic part that uh, turns the flow of air on and off to your pneumatic cylinders. Finally, we have the pneumatic cylinders. You can see that uh, they come in three different sizes, and there's a plunger in the middle of the cylinder that extends and retracts so that it can push and pull the mechanism on your robot. For this tutorial, you can use any size you want. Just keep in mind that the smaller ones will last for more cycles because it uses less air. I wanna talk a little bit about my Robotic Center Creator Academy. CA is dedicated to teaching kids about coding and robotics. And in 2022, our students were the Australian national champions in VEX Robotics. And four of our teams qualified for Worlds in Dallas, Texas in 2023. If your team is also heading to Worlds, make sure you comment below. We love to share ideas and connect with other teams. If you're in Australia, why not visit us in Eastwood or Chatswood to see how we can support your child or school robotics team. Visit our website at www.creatoracademy.au. All right, let's start by attaching the fitting to our air canister. Here we go. Use a wrench to uh, tighten it up. In the past, we had to have a Teflon tape on our um, fittings, but with these new, new pneumatic systems, we don't need any Teflon tape, which is really, really handy. Also going to attach the fittings to our pneumatic cylinders. Make sure it's as tight as it could be, whoops, as tight as it could be without being over tight. You don't want to uh, wreck the screw. All right, now let's get some tubing. So to attach the tubing uh, onto a fitting, all you have to do is um, put the tube in as far as possible, push it in as far as possible. Uh, you're gonna feel a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a click uh, when it's all pushed in. And then this little bit on the outside, just give it a little tug 
to make sure that it's all locked into place. When you need to remove the tubing, you push down on the red part of the fitting and then you can remove the tube really easily. I'm going to connect this to our uh, splitter. Then we're going to have another bit of tube for our pressure gauge. Just make sure when you're cutting tubing to make sure that you are uh, cutting straight and make sure that the tube is completely uh, settled in the groove when you're cutting. You don't want to cut it so that it is um, uh, it is on an angle because then it's um, it might not attach really well onto a fitting. Okay. All right, that's the pressure gauge done. Next, we're going to uh, take some tubing to connect up the solenoid. The solenoid uh, looks a little bit uh, like this. So we got um, air coming out um, of the two sides down here, but then it um, uh, the air goes in on this uh, on this side. So air goes in on this side, and air goes out uh, of these two sides. Okay. Gonna add one more of these angled fittings for the air that's going into the solenoid. Now we're going to connect up the air canister to our solenoid. Almost there. Now all we have to do is connect the two outputs for the solenoid into the um, fittings of our cylinder. Okay, and that is it. Really simple to get started. Um, so now we're going to fill up the air of the air canister uh, using the air pump. So the air is leaking out of somewhere. I'm just going to have to check where the air is leaking out. So it looks like that um, the air is actually coming out of the second side of my solenoid. So I'm just going to add a plunger in there to block out the air. So to add a plunger, we're still going to have to add a fitting as well. So here, I'm going to put down a fitting. So once the fitting is done, we can put in the plunger. There we go. Now that's going to block off the air. You can see the pressure gauge is increasing now, and it's staying up. 
Uh, we're going to fill it up to 100 PSI. So you can see that even though I filled it up to 100 PSI, when I pulled the, um, the, the pump out, uh, air leaks out. So it only fills up to 80 PSI. So um, these can canisters can hold up to like 150 PSI. If you wanted to, you can overfill it a little bit and then uh, pull it out. Just make sure you be very, very careful not to um, overpressurize the canister. Uh, otherwise, you can cause some really serious injuries. All right. So now that we have the system all pressured up and uh, all the plumbing is done as well, um, it's time to test to see if it actually works. So how do we test it? On the solenoid, there are these little orange buttons. See these little orange buttons? You can actually press those buttons uh, to activate the solenoid. Okay, so if I want this to extend, I need to um, activate the air to push onto the bottom part of my um, cylinder. So here, I'm going to have to press on uh, the left button on the solenoid. And then you're going to see, hopefully, that the uh, cylinder will expand. Yeah, see? And then when I press the other button, it's going to go back down. Okay? It's, it feels very strong. It's because um, this is a very small system. And um, uh, you're going to find that the smaller the cylinder, the more cycles you will get out of it uh, because it uses less air. Uh, another thing to remember is to keep the tubing uh, so that it is very short. It's not, not too long so that it doesn't use up as much air. So what if I wanted to uh, depressurize the system? Maybe I want to make some updates on the system. Well, all you have to do is grab the top of your um, your air canister, and then you get something sharp. It could be a, a, um, a some tweezers like this, or a um, uh, or a screwdriver. And then you push down gently on the middle uh, little valve, and then it's going to release the air. Okay. Make sure that the air canister is completely empty uh, before doing uh, changes to your pneumatic system. Otherwise, it will make a big pop. It's going to scare you. Okay? Just make sure that you check your gauges as well uh, and make sure everything is back to zero. Now, let's get to coding. First thing you're going to need to do is connect up your solenoid with your VEX V5 brain. I'm going to unzoom this again. And here's our VEX V5 brain. To connect to your brain, we need the three wire connector. Here is a three wire connector. Um, we connect one side to um, the left of the solenoid, and then one side to the right of the solenoid. And then finally, we connect the three wire cable onto these three wire inputs. Okay, so we start a new word blocks project, and then we're going to go into devices, add a device, and make it a three wire digital out, and select port A, which is where we connected the um, solenoid, close it up, and then we're going to make a, a little loop where we repeat 10 times. And in between, we're going to wait uh, a second each time we turn it on and off. So here we go into set digital out low, and then set digital out high. So one of them is going to make it um, pull the solenoid in and then the, uh, the cylinder in and then the other one's going to make it expand. Not sure which one, but uh, we'll test it out and find out. Okay, let's run the code and see if it works. 
Okay. That's great. So that's how you code the uh, solenoid using code blocks. But what about using C++? C++ is just as easy. Let's check it out. So in Vex code, let's start up a new text project. Make sure you've clicked on C++. And then we do the exact same thing. We add a device. Make sure we add a three wire digital output. Set it to port A. Done. And then here, we're going to go into our main function. Going to create a loop. Uh, make it a for loop. I, I is less than 10, so that we repeat 10 times. And then in here, we're going to say to set true or false for the digital output. So one of them is going to be the uh, um, retraction, and one of them is going to be extension. And then we also have a wait a second for each one. Copy all that, paste. So now we have a loop where we are setting that digital out true and false each time. Let's try it again. Two. Okay, now let's have a look at our table. And let's run this code. Okay, perfect. In case you didn't know, I have made hundreds of technology videos from Lego Robotics to VEX to Raspberry Pi and even 3D printing. Teaching technology is my full-time job, so if this video helps you out in any way, then please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You can also join our Coding Essentials membership that gives an extra 269 hours worth of Scratch and Python coding classes. Simply click on the Join button below to find out more. That's it from me today. I hope you had fun. I'll see you again on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.